are Ham Radio. Welcome back, everybody. It's Freddie Mac, your Ham Radio Crusader, and today we're going to talk about Motorola radios. Yeah. Uh, I've been dabbling quite a while now with Motorola CDM 750s, CDM 1250s. I don't think I have a 1550, but they're nifty radios for All Star Link nodes or All Star Link repeaters. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to cover a quick video on how to program them correctly for an All Star Link radio or repeater. So let's let's dive into that, shall we? So. Right here, I have a CDM 750 Motorola, and I'm going to put a link on the website to Bat Labs because they've got a model number identification tool on there. It's a nice little uh, reference site to find out what you need to know about your Motorola CDM 750s. This particular model is a UHF. It covers from about 403 megahertz to 470. It's wide-banded. Now, there's several of these out there that only go 450. To 470 that are a little narrow banded in UHF but every all of the VHFs I've found are pretty wide banded and actually I take that back this particular model is a VHF this is a VHF model so let's jump over here to the computer screen this is the software you know what beforehand let's just jump right here this is a programming cable that I got from uh, Blue Max 49ers. He's on eBay and uh, I'm not sure about Amazon, but he's got a cool website. This is a programming cable that he built. It's got a nice long cord on it too because sometimes your radio is far away from your computer. But it's got a USB. This does an FTDI type uh, serial connection through USB emulator into an RJ45, which will plug into the radio. But the first thing I'm going to do is plug this in into a 3.0 port, a USB port. I prefer 3.0, but I don't think it has to be. But when you plug it in, you'll hear the doo 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 <coughs> kind of a thing going on. And then I'm gonna take this end and plug it in. Tab goes down into the microphone port of the radio. And I'm gonna turn the power on to the radio. And it, I don't even know if you heard that, but it'll make a little bit of noise. This one's monitors turned on, but that's okay. So let's jump over here to the software. This is the Professional Radio CPS, copyrighted by in 2011 by Motorola Solutions. And I want to say this version is 6.12.05. Supported regions AA, which I guess is the United States, but it covers UHF, VHF, low band, 220, 700, and 800 megahertz. Yes. There is a version of this radio that does 220 megahertz in the amateur radio band as well. They're super hard to get. They're like 300 bucks a piece. If I ever get a set, I'm making a 220 repeater ride out of them. You watch, it's gonna happen. Okay, so once you've got your cable hooked up, you're gonna come right up here and hit the button that says read device. And then if it doesn't know where your programming cable's at, it's gonna ask, what COM port's it on? I'm pretty sure mine is on COM port 7. You hit OK. And if you get this and this, it has read the radio. Didn't make a lot of noise, if any at all. But the first thing you're going to see is this device at COM port 7. And you don't need me getting in the way. So if you hit this little plus sign right here, it kind of expands the configuration tree, if you will. And the first thing you can do, if you like, is hit radio information. I give it a good double click. And it tells you the model number to the radio, the serial number, and the firmware version. This tracking info tells you the first time it was ever programmed, October 2007. And the last time it was programmed today, well, it, we haven't written to it yet, but it's July 29th, 2025. That'll change. It's frequency range and it's power. So low power capable of 20 watts, high power is 54 watts. So the most important part here is in, under radio configuration. Double click and the first tab you want to go to is accessory configuration and receive audio can be flat or filtered. I prefer flat 
If you're doing any kind of data through this radio, you're going to want to set that to flat transmit audio, but we're not doing data. Data's off of pin 5. We're going to use pin 2 on the accessory connector, and it is external mic audio, which is what we want. And you can do an, an ignition sense type if you want. But the very next important thing is this tab that says accessory pins. You want to make sure pin 3 is external mic PTT input and pin 8 is PL and CSQ detect slash talk group detect output. And you want to make sure both of these are active low. I think you can set them as active high, but you got to make sure All Star Link is programmed in the uh, tune CLI uh, to match that. But I just leave them at active low and I think that translates into uh, USB invert if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, if you got these two things checked, you're good to go for the most part. But there's other things you need to know. Uh, nothing under auxiliary control. Transmit power. Uh, the, I try to set this lower than the lowest number, but this model will not let me. So I set them both at 20 watts because I don't want it to go any higher. I would prefer to be able to set the output power down to about 5 if I'm putting it on a repeater because I want the amplifier for the repeater to be carrying most of the load instead of the transmitter of the repeater. But if you've got 20 watts and that's all you can dial it down to, you can put some kind of filter or attenuator between it and the, and the uh, amplifier to try to get it to where you want it to be. But for an all-star node, 20 is fine as long as you keep a cooling fan on it. So uh, we can come up here to monitor, silence fine, test, menu, scan, we're not going to be scanning with an all-star node. Alert tones, I usually just set to normal. And the fixed volumes, whatever you want, just a personal preference and what you want to do with the LEDs. Any basic settings. If it's on the hook, it defeats PL tone or off the hook. So I'm going to uncheck that because I don't want it to do that. And you disable the alerts. Uh, this, this, like I said, this once again is personal preference. An option board. Here's an important one. If you use a PL tone on transmit and receive and this little button right here is checked, it will strip the PL tone and you don't want that to happen. So and make sure enable flat transmit audio is unchecked. Voice storage microphone, control head mic is normally what you want there. And a password. I wouldn't even mess with this because if you forget it, you can't get back in it. It's you, it's just don't go there. <laughs> anyway, once you got that done, we're going to come to controls and menus. Now, this particular model, as you know, is a P1 and P2 and four channels. There's a four channel radio, and I've got channel one selected. And you can program P1 and 2 to do several different things. And that's in this menu right here. I use button one and button two for channel select, so you put push button one, you get channel one, you push button two, you get channel two. Uh, button three and four, which are these two buttons. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. Three and four can be configured for a long and a short press. Short press is channel three, short press is backlight control with this, you know, not a whole lot of backlight, if any, none that I'm seeing. But you can do channel select 4 and a long press can toggle high, low power, whatever you want to do here. And then you got this tab that says programmable buttons, P1 and 2, which are, this is P1, this is P2. You can set short press P1 to monitor and P2 for is unassigned right now, short press and then long press is open squelch. And long press on P2 is high low power. I'm not going to mess with that. And then you got microphone buttons. We're not, we don't have a microphone on here, so we're not going to program any of those buttons. Next important part of the tree is conventional personality. You can see that this has, this is what Motorola calls for channels, a personality. This, they went through this phase with their programming software. But conventional personality one is channel one. And as you can see, I've got this set for 147.5, PL tone 110.9 on both sides. 
and it's a TPL. They code that particular tone at 2Z. That's their thing. But you want to make sure right here in channel bandwidth that you're on 25. Ham radio is wide banded. You can set for narrow band and 20 kilohertz split if you want. Leave it at that. Options up here. The transmit power level for this channel is set for high. For some reason on this model, I cannot select low. Other models, I can. I don't know why this is. Here's your timeout timer. I have set it for infinite, or you can set it for, I think the highest rating is 180. But I set it for infinite and let the fan take over. Because there's a timeout timer on all Starlink node and your radio might keep transmitting, but it will cut it off at whatever you designate. Unmute rule, you want standard unmuting, standard muting. Busy channel lockout is disabled. You can set this as personal preference. Signaling is none, scan is disabled, phone is disabled. The advanced compression types are disabled, but you want emphasis selection of D and pre-emphasis, and you can turn those off in your all-star node since it's already coming in with emphasis. And then you've got a data revert, which you're not gonna use anyway. So we can hit close on that. Signaling is not used, phone is not used, scan list is not used in an all-star node, but if you wanna set up a scan, you scan list, you could do that here. And then the personality assignment per zone, there's only one zone and channels one, two, or three are in it. So that's what we're gonna do. And you know, the cool thing about doing multiple channels in an all-star link node radio is if, hey, you want to change channels, you, maybe you're getting a little interference on one channel one day for whatever reason, you can switch it over to another channel for a different day. Just make sure it's programmed for an amateur radio frequency. And that you've got your channel spacing at 25, etc. So anyway, you can use these buttons right down here to thumb through your different channels. You see one of three, two of three, yada yada, hit close. Nonetheless, once you're done with all of this, you can come right up here and hit right to device. And we wait. And the radio makes a funny noise, most generally. And we're done. The radio is programmed. And it's just as simple as that. That's channel one, that's channel two. Push and hold. Opens a squelch. And you know, there's your volume control. And you can take out your programming cable. And right here in the back is your 16. This is actually a 20 pin accessory connector, but the 16 pin will fit into it. I may have one here. But the 16 pin will connect into it, but you just gotta put it right smack dab in the middle. Be very careful of the pins and it will pop right into place. And if you wanna take it out again, you push the tab, the bottom tab forward, it releases the latch and you just work it out gently. And that's of course the antenna, the power, the accessory connector. And these are some nifty little 3D printed stands that you can put two radios in. You see the little X's here. You can see these radios have this little pattern right here. Well, look right here, if you can see it, that little pattern right here, these radios will fit right into it and kind of lock in and you get you, a, I think it's a five millimeter screw or an M5 that will screw right in there. And uh, it works out really, really well. So another thing a lot of folks are doing, and it's the smart play really, you can take a nice little tool here, kind of pop underneath that, slowly work around work under it. This one acts like it's glued. In this top cover will just come right off. It'll pop right back on too. This one's got a little damaged heat sink, but it reveals the, the radio's skin and heat sink and keeps it cooler. And you could even put a thermostat right on the metal if you wanted to, but it's a nice little trick to do. That is how you program the Motorola CDM750. It'll also work, for the same software will also work for the 1250, which has a dot matrix display. 
kind of looks like that. The display will light up and you've got a dot matrix character display there for it. And you've got the uh, CDM 1550 and some of them end with, those models end with LS. And I think they may have be trunking and conventional. I'm not sure. I haven't had one of those. So nonetheless, that's how you program them for an all-star link node. And I'll leave a link in the description to get those accessory connectors and uh, these 3D printed stands. So, all right. I hope you all enjoy this video. This is Freddie Mac, your ham radio crusader. Thank you for all your support. Saying 73s, wishing all the good signals to be yours. And ham on, y'all.